Hey guys, how you doing? Um, so today I'm going to be talking about phrasing, uh, more specifically in improvisation and how I think when I improvise. Now, uh, there's many, many ways we can improve our improvisation, uh, but I'm just gonna be talking about some ways that have helped me um, along my path and my journey, which I'm continuously on. Um, before we start, it goes without saying, if you do like the video, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel uh, and please ring the bell. I'm going to be doing a lot, a lot more content. Um, I've got a new setup going, a uh, new camera. Um, I'm actually going to be recording the audio of my, my speaking, so um, it's a bit easy to hear and understand. Maybe if you're not from you know, the UK and you're from elsewhere, um, you can pick up what I'm saying a bit clearer. Um, so today I'm just going to be talking about um, some, some of the ways that I think about, or what I think about when I phrase and, and when I improvise. Now, I'm kind of at that point, and y you might... Um, you might understand where I'm coming from when I say this is when I improvise, when you're not thinking, that's when some of your best work can come out when you're not thinking. So if you're overthinking, you're overanalyzing everything you play, um, it can really be detrimental to your playing and it can be your downfall. So th the first thing is, is try not to overthink what you're playing. Really, really listen into what you're playing over. Um, that is my first thing I would say. Secondly, um, like I just played with at the start of the track, it was just a D minor funk backing. If you want to improve your improvisation, don't just play over backing tracks, okay? That's kind of the result of what happens when you um, play over, uh, when you've practiced some drills and stuff. That's what the start of the video, that's kind of like your 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 outcome you want it to sound like and want it, want it to become. But when you're drilling improvisation, don't just whittle over backing tracks because, um, again, it's not going to help you. You really need to take things nice and slow. Okay, so practice with the metronome I would advise and really keep it um, methodical, okay? Drill in um, your practice and improvisation, you don't just get better by just improvising. Um, you get better by understanding what concepts you can use and you know just your fretboard visualization okay this is going to help you along the way. So firstly, say if um, we just wanted to straight off Try to improve. We can do this without, you know, getting better at, you know, visually seeing the instrument. Although, the more you visually see the instrument, better. The visualization side of it does help because when you factor in, say, chord tones um, and things like this, it's going to help you. You improvise like re re resolving lines and your resolution of lines, and just it's going to, it's going to improve, you know, tenfold. So really, the visualization thing is a big thing but you can get better improvising without it as well. There's plenty of guitarists who can play 
really, really well with, with a very, you know, limited awareness of what they're actually playing, you know. So you guide with your ear, but also, you know, later on, or if you are at the stage where you can see the fretboard well, guide with your eyes as well when you can see what you're playing, um, i.e. picking out chord tones and phrases. So when I practice, okay, this is for me, may not work for everyone, but when I practice my phrasing, I will always play with a metronome because your timing is the most important thing that you can do, I think anyway. You could be the best guitarist in the world, you could have the best technique, best everything, but if you're playing the thing, um, what you want to play out of time, it's just gonna sound kind of crap. Okay, that's for me. I like the playing to be on the grid, or you know, a lot of the time. Um, and it's nice to play within the time and, and through the bar line, yes, I get that, and I do do that as well. But, you know, you don't have to be a musician to know when something's out of time, like the same thing. You don't have to be a musician to know if something's flat or sharp, or you're singing out of tune um, or, or playing out of tune. So playing in time is number one. You must be able to play in time and improve your timing um, with that by playing with a metronome or a click track, okay? Secondly, practice slow if you want to get better with improvising and, and playing on the spot and improve your phrasing you must be able to practice slow and play things slow because if you play things to a faster tempo all the time and you're practicing just whittling over a backing track you're going to rely on muscle memory and a lot of the time we want to get rid of that muscle memory or you know add to it with vocabulary so when you practice lines with a metronome play super slow so what what would i do if i wanted to improve now the first thing i would do i'll, I'll set up a metronome two seconds i would put it on say 60 bpm okay and just i would just start playing quarter notes okay so i'll play it in the key um of D minor like the track was, and I would just start playing quarter notes, um, and I'd maybe pick some notes I wouldn't normally play, and I'd try not to rely on muscle memory. So I'm gonna play what my brain wants me to play and not what my fingers dictate, and this is what a problem with a lot of guys have. They let their fingers be in charge of them while they want the, you want to have your brain in charge of what your fingers do, if that makes sense. Guitarists will know what I mean. Okay, so say I'm just gonna start playing quarter notes, And I'm maybe going to pick some notes that I wouldn't normally choose, okay? So. Okay, so I'm not thinking about phrasing here. I'm not thinking anything um, to be really musical. I'm just letting my finger, my brain be in control of what I want to play. And I'm maybe picking some notes that I wouldn't want to use. So, let me pause this. The next thing I would think about is rhythm. Now, I don't mean rhythm as in, you know, I'm thinking, put some rhythm to your phrases. So what I would do is come up with a rhythmic pattern, okay, and manipulate it in the scales I want to use. So over the track at the beginning, I was just using like D minor pentatonic, uh, D uh, natural minor, um, some D, mix, uh, D melodic minor and D like Dorian kind of feel. And over that, there was an altered chord. I used some other stuff, but predominantly 90% of it, 99% of it, if you like, is the natural minor or pentatonic, okay, with some chromaticism put in, but I can't really turn that off because it's just part of my playing now. Um, so what I would do is put some rhythm to my playing to give the listener some idea of what I'm doing and my, making my line sound almost premeditated, okay? So say if I, I'm just gonna keep it on 60, nice and slow, I might put a rhythm in like da, ba, 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 okay? so. What I would do, here's the metronome, and here's the rhythm. Da, da, ba, ba. Now I'd use that rhythm and manipulate it within the scale I want to use. So it'd be like this. Two, three, four. OK, 
Okay, now playing it at this tempo enables me to, and it gives me the time to consciously choose the notes I want to, okay? So. Again, I'm not thinking really musically at this point. I'm just trying to keep up a rhythm. Now, if you haven't done that before, that is um, it's probably harder than what it sounds, okay? You're sticking to a rhythm, especially when you up the tempo. So say if I upped it to 100, maybe what the track was, or 105. <laughs> Okay, so again, I'm not really thinking too much about the note choice. Then when you start uh, playing over a track or you want to add in some notes, then, uh, sorry, rely on the note choice you want to make. So you're consciously choosing what chord tones you want, then that's uh, another thing to think about. So one, first part, play quarter notes nice and slow. Then start to add in rhythm. So I have just done that, ba, ba. Third thing you want to do is then add in chord tones. So if I'm just thinking D minor, for instance, I know the chords change, but if I'm thinking D minor, I'm thinking about the triads in there uh, and what's over the chord. So we've got a D minor seven, okay? So I'm thinking, my, if I'm in this position, I'm thinking my fifth is here, my root, my flat three, my five, my one, my flat three, my five. You can add in the flat seven as well, because of the minor seven. But just say you want to target the triads for now. I would maybe play the rhythm, so three times, like. And then maybe resolve on a chord tone, okay, on the fourth bar, just to resolve to a chord tone of my choosing. So i.e. the one, the flat three, or the five. So I'll play that against the click, so you can hear. So it might be like this. And then flat three there, and start again. And I just landed on my fifth there. So when you start to do this and even go slower than this, uh, and if you haven't got the visualization to be able to see it, then you do really need to start slow. But once you start to bring this into your practice, okay, improvisation is about the practice, not just putting on a track and playing over it. Really um, slow everything down um, and really be conscious of what you're picking here the notes, especially when looking at the chord tone stuff. When you're just um, playing with a rhythm and you're not really thinking, you just want to keep within the key, then that's when you can, you know, you don't have to worry so much and be as really strict on yourself to pick out certain chord tones. But the last thing I want to talk about today um, would be maybe you pick that rhythm. I'll choose a different one now. Um, and then I'll do the rhythm for three times, then on the fourth part I'll round it up and maybe conclude it like almost freestyle or something just to bring it back to the start, okay? So I'll just think of something on the spot. Uh, so I might pick a rhythm like um, ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba okay? So it'd be like... Okay, so you could see there, I was just kind of repeating rhythms a lot. So I am always thinking rhythmically when I play. I'm not just, you know, it's not just, um, 
It's hard to explain because it's it's kind of I've just built it up into my plane. But hopefully you can see from the the first like you know uh, the minutes of this video that I'm always thinking rhythmically. Rhythmically, I'm always thinking of my timing. I'm always not always thinking about the chord tones, but they are in the back of my head. So especially when I when I want to resolve lines, I'm thinking where are my chord tones, where are my triads. But really, you can just get by with just starting to bring your practice down to a slower tempo, starting to choose notes you wouldn't normally play to get out that muscle memory. Um, even if you just know pentatonic, pentatonic position one, okay, you can still do this with there, okay? Think more rhythmically. Um, start repeating phrases uh, and, and just go from there, nice and slow. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more uh, videos now. I've got a kind of a new setup, new camera. So let me know below, please. It's really important. Uh, let me know below what you want to see, what you thought of this. Um, give it a like and uh, subscribe and ring the bell because if when you ring the bell, all the videos will pop up or I'm uploading. And like I say, I'm going to be doing a lot more. Hopefully, going to be doing five, six videos uh, a week for you guys um, with some playing and just some lesson stuff. So uh, yeah. Hope all that makes sense. Any questions below, write them down and I'll give it an answer. Um, but yeah, good luck and I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.